Thank you for participating today. We are now joined by Deshaun Giroux and we'll begin the press conference. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question is from Brian Smith, Houston Chronicle. Dejan, can you just describe what this win means for this program, to, to this team, to Kelvin Sampson, to this fan base? You guys haven't had a win like this since 1984. Um, you know, just the great culture that Coach Sampson has built here. Um, you know, just getting um, – getting guys to come here and, you know, buy into, you know, whatever plan he has for us uh, to be successful. And, you know, we just have a, a group of guys who, who, who buys into his plan and listens to him and, you know, just try their best to execute whatever he says. Um, we love Coach Sams very much, uh, and we'll run through a wall for him. Our next question is from Chris Baldwin, Paper City, Houston. Hey, hey, Dejan. What were the, the keys to getting into their zone and and you know attacking that and as successfully as you guys were able to? Um, you know, our coaches came up with a great game plan, you know, to to um get into the middle of the zone, which it was, you know, flashing from the baseline or, you know, flashing from the opposite wing. And, you know, our guards did a great job of making the passes inside and whoever caught the ball in the middle just, you know, did a great job of making decisions and, you know, whether whether it was shooting or making the, the right pass and you know, we was able to follow the game plan that they came up with, and, you know, we, we did it to a T tonight. Our next question is from Mark Berman. Dejan, I know that you were asked about, you know, getting it for the first time there in since 84, but do you have your arms around the history you guys are making here? I mean, it's been 37 years since this school has gotten back to the Elite Eight. Do you have your arms around that, what that means? Um, not really, you know. <laughs> Obviously, we know, you know, the excitement we're bringing to the city of Houston and, you know, to the university. Um, you know, we're very happy for that. But, you know, we have a business, we have a business um, to accomplish. We, we have a mission to accomplish. And, um, you know, we, we're just trying to do our best to, you know, try to go as far as we can. Um, we know we're making, we're, we're making history. Um, and like I've been saying, we're, we're just approaching it as a business standpoint. Um, you know, just going out, executing our game plan and, you know, plans out to the great culture that we have here. What's it like fighting through your health situ situation to get where you got today? Um, you know, like I said, I had a week off to rest. Um, it, was a, it was a great week. Um, you know, I, I didn't practice. Um, I, was just, I was getting treatment from, you know, our, our staff. They did a great job of, you know, icing me and, you know, rubbing me down. So, you know, shout out to them. But, you know, the week off really helped and, um, tonight, I, um, I didn't feel my hip at all, and I was able to, you know, play to my full potential and help my team get this win. Our next question is from Joseph Duarte, Houston Chronicle. Dejan, just uh, early on, how you guys kind of got off to that start, you, you were patient, moving the ball around. What, what can you kind of just take us through the, the approach you guys had to that zone and the success that you had and sort of how you fed off of that? Um, you know, planning our conference, we faced um, zones a lot this year. And, you know, um, while we were able to, you know, face a lot of zones this year, that helped us, you know, get prepared for this game um, because, you know, we were very successful, um, you know, during the year. And that helped us um, a lot today. Um, getting in the middle, you have to be patient. Um, you can't rush. And, you know, as long as you make the right play, everything else will uh, uh, happen for itself. And once the ball go up, you know, uh, Against the zone, you have a great chance of offensive rebounding because, you know, they're out of position. So, you know, we did a great job of um, taking the shots that they gave us, um, whether we made it or missed it. And we got, uh, we got on the offensive glass very well and shared the ball and, you know, just believing in ourselves. One of those late timeouts, uh, Dejan, they showed Coach Sampson getting real fiery on the, on the sideline. I know that's nothing new, but was there anything that he told you all late there that kind of served as a spark? Um, you know, the same thing he always says about our motor. You know, we have to uh, play hard. Well, we were playing hard, but we weren't competing, um, you know, is, is, is the words he liked to say. And, you know, once we started competing, we kind of took off and, you know, the game um, ended as it did. Um, we had a comfortable lead. We took care of the ball, took great shots, um, able to offer the rebound. We made our free throws and, you know, we were able to get the win tonight. Our next question is from Andre Monroe, Insider Institute. Congratulations on the win. You guys held them to only 46 points tonight. How much of how much 
how's your defense impacted them tonight? Um, you know, we're a great defensive team. Um, you know, we we trust in ourselves. We, we trust in the system that you know our coaches have built here, and you know, just going by the system. Once you do that, everything else will happen for itself. Um, you know, just being in the right positions. You know, following the game plan. Our coaches. Um, whoever has the scout for uh, each game come up with great game plans. And, you know, if we do a great job executing, we usually come out to win. And that's what we did tonight. And, you know, we were able to get the win. Our next question is from Andy Yanez, the Cougar. Hey, Dejan. You hear me? Yeah. Dejan, uh, last, last week, the, the two-day turnaround from – weekend games to Monday. Did you have, is there anything you guys to take away from that short notice and how y'all played against Rutgers for the upcoming Elite Eight matchup? Hey, you want to say it one more time? The short turnaround to Monday's game, is there anything that you guys learned from last week that you could take away for this upcoming game on Monday? Um, you know, just like I said, just following our game plan and playing to our culture. Um, if we do that, then most likely we'll come out to win. Um, you know, just believing what our coaches are telling us because they're usually – you know, they're usually right in what they're telling us. They watch a lot of film. Um, we watch um, a bunch of film, at, um, you know, as a unit. Um, and I, like I said, following the game plan, um, they do a great job of coming up with a game plan. And, you know, our culture usually win games. So um, if we do those things, um, we have a great chance. Our next question is from Randy Mickelvey, KPRC TV. <laughs> Hey, Dave, John, Randy McAvoy, KPRC in Houston. I'm here in Indy with you guys. Congrats on the win. Thanks. How important was it, and I apologize if you've answered this, I just got off a live shot. Uh, Marcus Sasser, seeing him come out and shoot the ball a lot better with confidence at the beginning of this game after he struggled a little bit. How important was that to really get him going tonight? Very important. He's very important to our offense. Um, whether it's making threes or driving and, you know, shooting his floater, he's a great player. He has a lot of confidence in himself. Um, last game, you know, he kind of got off to a rough start. We're getting two fouls early, and, you know, that kind of shocked his confidence. But, you know, the whole week we were telling him, you know, we need you to shoot the ball. Whether you're making it or miss it, we need you to shoot. You're a great shooter. And, you know, tonight he did that. Um, we believe in Marcus, and, you know, he's been doing it all year. So, you know, why, why go away from it now? Um, you know, as long as he plays game, we're all right with that. And tonight he did that, and he helped us, you know, um, be successful. Thank you. Our next question is from Matt Musel. Hey, John, it seemed like you had Syracuse's offense. They were in, under duress all night long. Do you think that pressure defense surprised them? Um, um, I guess so. Um, yes, sir. You know, we're a great defensive team. Um, we do a great job of following our game plan, you know, that the coaches come up with. Um, you know, we play very hard. Um, you know, once we do those things, we put ourselves in great positions. And, you know, tonight we were able to execute that. And, you know, we put ourselves in a great position to get the win. And Syracuse is a great team, um, great offensive team, great shooting team. Um, but, you know, we were able to take away the three-point line tonight, you know, kind of make them drive and make plays. Um, tonight they just had an off night, and we were able to, you know, capitalize out their misses, whether it was, you know, on a fast break or – you know, getting into the middle of the zone and making the right plays. And tonight we did that. Dejan, right at the end, were you hurting something? Was that cramping at the uh, end? Nah. Uh, you weren't hurt? Yeah, just just cramps, just cramps. Um, you know, I'll just have to, you know, drink more liquids um, come Monday and, you know, not put myself in that position again. Our next question is from Mike Curtis. Hey, Dejan. Um, Buddy Beheim was on a really hot streak coming into this game. What was the game plan for him, and how did you limit him to 12 points and one for nine from the three-point line? Um, you know, just chasing him off, you know, all of the pin downs and, you know, the ball screens, not sliding him because, you know, a lot of teams um, tried to slide him, and he's a, he has unlimited range. Uh, he's a great shooter. Um, you know, just trying to make him make plays off the bounce instead of just, you know, catching and shooting it or just coming off a pin down and shooting it. Um, and I feel like I did a great job tonight. Um, whenever I wasn't on him, I feel like my teammates did a great job tonight. Uh, we followed the game plan and executed it. And tonight, he just had an off night. But he, um, he's a great player, great shooter. Um, anytime he got the ball off, uh, I, was just, I was scared that he was going to make it. But, you know, tonight, 
Uh, we did a great job, and we, we was able to get the win. Thank you, Dejan, for your time, and best of luck in the next round. Yep, thank you. We will be joined momentarily by Coach Kelvin Sampson. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. We will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Kelvin Sampson and then go to questions. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you're called on, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go right into questions. Okay, uh, just really proud of um, really proud of my team. Um, we had a great week of uh, preparation. Um, now, obviously, everybody works versus the zone, but I thought we spent more time defensively. Um, you know, taking away the three-point line, <clears throat> that's not easy to do. You say, go out there and stop somebody. You, I mean, you've got to have clear responsibilities and great communication, uh, and you can't get hit by screens. Uh, but he's really good off the ball. Uh, you watch him against the last two games. He got, he got open a lot, ducking in and out of those screens. and. Um, but the key is you've got to stay outside his hips. You can't stay inside him. You've got to be outside. And then the, um, the big has to help. But, you know, our, our uh, Dejan Giroux, uh, I, I thought was uh, tremendous. Uh, he's a tough kid, smart too. Very high basketball IQ. You can't be a great defender if you're not smart. Um, then um, I thought we, we did a great job of um, playing down the middle versus their zone. Um, although we had uh, got the ball inside uh, enough, and that was important. You know, they do a good job of fanning out um, uh, when the ball goes to the high post, but you've got to get the ball under, under the basket and, and um, down the pipe. So, but we did a good job at that. Uh, our guys moved the ball well, you know, having um, 15 assists, on 23 baskets uh, was good, uh, and only eight turnovers. You know, we took care of the ball, we passed it, we executed well, and then our defense was uh, solid all night. Holding that team to uh, uh, 46 points is not easy. So hats off to uh, my kids. I'm really proud of them. Our first question is from Chris Baldwin, Paper City, Houston. Coach, th th there's a lot of talk about their their zone coming into the game. Did did you think your defense was almost overlooked, and what, what was the key to you know? That well, performance? I didn't care about that. I mean, we're not much of a storyline. Uh, you know, we're Houston. They're Syracuse. They've got a Hall of Fame coach, and his defense has been great for a long, long time. So rightfully so. I mean, they're, they're, but um, you know, we play pretty good defense too. Um, and we just, what about our business? I don't think you get in the war words or try to outshine somebody. You know, it's just, a, it's, at the end of the day, it's a competition. You know, you're trying to get your kids to compete. Um, you know, we have a culture and identity we try to play to. And I thought that's uh, what we did. Our kids play like we played all year long. You know, we didn't do anything special except have a different game plan. You know, the game plan against Syracuse is the same as having the game plan against um, uh, whoever, whoever else we play. Um, but it's just different players with different skill set. Um, the only thing we did different tonight, we didn't double the post because that would have required uh, backside um, uh, rotations or backside help, and that would have left the shooters open. Um, the one time that Buddy got the foul, Dejan, Dejan thought he should have been in help, and he shouldn't have. So next time out, we cleared that up, and we didn't make that mistake, mistake again. So, But every time you play against a, a teams that feast off the three-point line, you have to have a plan how to guard the three-point line. Uh, I thought Marcus, Quentin, uh, Dejan, and Tremont. But equally important was whoever was guarding Dojolai. 
the, the guy guarding Dozier, I was as much part of it as uh, the other guys because he had to come up to the line of scrimmage and stop the ball. And then when Dozier leaked or rolled uh, to a basket, the other three guys had to uh, load to his, to his side. So, you know, we just talked all week about five people guard the ball. It's not one person or two people, it's five. Five people had to be in the right spot. And I thought for the most part uh, we were. You know, you're not going to shut them out. But uh, holding that team to 28, uh, what did they shoot from the floor? Wow, I didn't realize they shot 28% and um, holding them to uh, five threes, five for 23. That was tremendous, tremendous effort on our uh, kids' part. Really proud, really proud of our kids' attention to detail this week in practice. Um, uh, Kellen, Kellen um, had the scout report. He did a great job of uh, breaking down their offense and and um, personnel, you know, we, we, were, we were really locked into the scout report and our kids did a great job executing. Our next question is from Randy McElvoy, KPRC TV. Hey, Kelvin, congrats on the win. Uh, two part question. Uh, if you could talk about the importance of that 10 0 run to end the half after they had, uh, I believe it, they had tied it at 20, you guys responded with a 10 0 run going to halftime. Part two is if you can uh, elaborate on, on Gorham's night and what he was able to do, not only offensively, but uh, rebounding as well. Well, the last part, <clears throat> a big focal point of our offense is, is attacking through the high post, but you can't stand in the high post. You've got to constantly be ducking in and out to, to make them have to know where we're coming from. Um, you know, Justin was in. Uh, Dejan was in the high post, Quentin was in the high post, Marcos was in the high post. We had a lot of guys rotating in and out. We, we never stood. That way one person couldn't, uh, couldn't um, uh, uh, have accountability for, for the middle of the zone. We were always in and out. But when, when Justin got it, I thought we were at our best at playing high-low. And then we, one thing we told Justin is attack the basket. Because if he could get by his man, that, that means that uh, the five man's man had to come over, rotate and help on Justin, which opened up offensive rebounding. There's nobody there to block him out because they're in his zone. So even if he missed it, I thought we were in a great position to get the rebound and uh, kick it out for a, a, another shot or tip, tip it in or whatever. But um, um, and then rebounding, I mean, he did what he's done all year. He didn't do anything special tonight on the boards. He just did what he's done all year long. Justin's best rebounder in our conference, and a conference full of good rebounders. Um, but Justin is a um, motor, motor man. He's got a great motor. Um, big guys that are athletic with no motors are, are wasted in their skill sets. Um, Justin's not the most talented dude, but um, there's a lot to be said uh, for his motor. You know, Nate Hinton last year, Justin this year, um, you know, we've had a lot of guys that, that buy into uh, rebounding in this program, and uh, uh, none more so than uh, Justin. He, he was a warrior out there tonight. Our next question is from Brian Smith, Houston Chronicle. Kelvin, Brian Smith, Houston Chronicle. The, the last couple of times you guys were in the Sweet 16, I mean, it was tough the way those games ended last minute, coming down to just a couple points. I know you're going to play a, an even bigger game in two days, but what's it mean for these kids, this program, this fan base, just to get you know to get back to the Elite Eight? That that's a place this team and this program and this fan base has not been since 1984. How many years is that? 37 years. Well, just think of all the people that have come and gone since then. Um, um, I don't know. I'm not even sure how to answer that, uh, Brian. Um, no, I think you should honor the past, but I think you should live in the present. You know, 37 years ago has, is irrelevant to our team. You know, our, our team is, is now. You know, it's, these kids are now. People should be worshiping this team. Should be not worshiping. You should worship God. But the t people should heap in praise on this group of kids. This is about this group of kids this, and what they've accomplished. Uh, and what they've worked to accomplish. Uh, I'm proud of them. Um, what, what happened 37 years ago was, um, um, you know, that's, 
that was tremendous. That was great. It was one of the great teams of all time. But um, I don't think any current team plays based on what happened 30 years ago. Um, our, our, every guy on our team was born in the is, – is, most of our guys were born in the 2000s. Um, so I'm, I'm, prou I'm proud of this team. If, and, and I'm proud – and we're going to live in the moment. Um, I don't think you should I, – I, and I really do mean this. I don't think anybody should think, well, uh, it's about time we did this. Well, a lot of programs has never done it once. And it's not easy to do. It's hard to win games. It's hard to make the tournament. It's hard to advance in the tournament. But um, you know, our, our kids have, have uh, sacrificed. This COVID thing is, um, has been real. You know, we, we took a COVID test last night at, uh, after 10 o'clock. And then we took another COVID test at about 4.30 or 5 o'clock, about 5 o'clock today. Uh, we're constantly being screened and have to wear masks, get on the elevator with just our, you know, the things we do away from the court just to be able to play. Um, it, it's been unbelievable. But, um, you know, this is the University of Houston. Every coach and every player is part of all of our successes. But I think every former player and every former coach should be proud of this team um, for what they've accomplished. And that's, uh, that's saying something. Our next question is from Mark Berman. Yeah, Mark Berman from Fox in Houston. Along the lines of the history, I know you don't want to, look, you're looking forward, not backwards, but when you got here, Kelvin, the cupboard was less than bare. Now you're at a point where you, you have this, you've, you've gotten this team to a level they haven't been in in nearly four decades. When you think about that, how does that hit you? Um. <laughs> I mean, it's great, but I mean, I'm, I've been so locked in on the Syracuse Scout report, it's hard for me to switch channels right now. I'm still on, I'm still on channel 37. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm not downplaying or poo-pooing anything, but uh, it's just hard for me to answer that right now. I, just, I feel exhausted. Um, so proud of um, our kids and their attention to detail uh, tonight. And, and um, beating a team that was playing great. Syracuse is playing good. They got a good team. I mean, they're really good. Um, but as far as that stuff, I, I just I don't know how to, I don't know how to answer that right now. Um, I'm just focused on that. And as soon as I leave here, um, I'm sure I'll have Oregon State on my iPad. Start looking at them on the way to the um, to the hotel. The other stuff. I, we can wait and talk about that some other day. But right now, proud of our guys. Celebrate <clears throat> until I get on the bus, then we'll start working on Oregon State. Are you enjoying the moment? My mother always told me I was no good at that. <clears throat> she was smarter than me, so I, I don't know how to do that. Um, never been much for vacations or, you know, just um, I always thought we needed to outwork everybody, just just outwork people. But we we – I'm proud of this team. We have high character kids. I have no discipline problems. Uh, my best player, my best defender tonight, Dejan Giroux, has already graduated from college. I have two other seniors that will graduate in May. We have, we have a first class, first rate basketball programs for, with great kids. Um, uh, we represent University of Houston the right way. Proud of our fans. We had great fans here tonight. I, I could feel them. I heard Syracuse's fans. Syracuse has great fans too, but um, um, I know there's a lot of watch parties back in Houston, all over the country. You know, we, you know, if somebody finds a way to get me that stuff. Lauren, Lauren does a good job. Look at this; she was showing me some stuff a while ago. I think that's pretty neat. But you know, we've kind of been locked up in the um, RV park. <laughs> okay, everybody's kind of in an RV. That's what the individual floors are like. So we'll go back, jump in our RV tonight and uh, shut the doors and get ready for Oregon State. But, but I want to tell our fans we really appreciate their support. And, um, you know, we're 40 minutes away from the Final Four, just like Oregon State is too. You know, two teams are going to um, pour their guts out to uh, get to that Final Four. We've got two days to get ready, and that's what our focus is on.
Thank you, Coach, for your time. Okay. That's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us.
We are joined by Coach Bayheim. We'll get started with an opening statement. Again, a reminder to media, if you do have a question, please use the raise hand function, and we'll get to as many questions as we can in the time that we have with Coach. Coach, if you'd like to start with an opening statement, please. I thought that uh, I thought Houston was tremendous defensively. Uh, I thought we did a great job fighting back, getting back just before the half, and we gave them two buckets before the half and just two breakdowns. But their defense was just too much for us. Uh, you know, we missed some opportunities, but I just I'd give ninety percent of the credit to their defense. Uh, they're really a good defensive team. We did a good job on the boards. We we hung in there for us. We did a pretty good job, uh, um, you know, defensively for most of the game. The end, we broke down a little bit, but we did a pretty good job defensively. But you know, we we scored twenty points in the half. Uh, we're not going to win. But again, that was a tribute to their defense. Their defense was really terrific. It's the the best defense that uh, that we've seen this year, and they deserve to win. questions started with Mike Waters. Mike, please go ahead. Yeah, Jim, sort of kind of a, a, a two-part question. In terms of Houston's defense, can you compare them to anybody in the ACC? And, and offensively, was there anything you were hoping to do that you just couldn't get done against that defense today? Well, we wanted to get Marek and Quincy when, when they pushed up on Buddy and Joe. They had great opportunities. I mean, really good opportunities. And, you know, uh, you know, Marek just had a he just had a tough game. You know, he missed a couple layups that he normally makes. Uh, Quincy had a couple really good opportunities around the basket that he normally will finish. Um, we knew that they were going to push up on Buddy and Joe, and 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 that they they're tremendous defensive guards there. But I thought that uh, Marek and and Quincy would maybe be able to get something inside. Um, I thought Allen could play against this team, but he gave up the two threes to Sasser right, right in front of him. And the last six, seven games, uh, he just has not been able to defend, to stay on the court. I think it was a game he might have been able to get something off this team, off the off the bounce. But um, you know, he just has struggled at the end of the year. And uh, this game was probably too physical for Robert. They were just too physical for him, but I thought Jesse did a great job. I thought that uh, I thought uh, Kadari had a good start. He made a couple, you know, careless mistakes, but uh, I thought he did some really, really positive things tonight. But we thought we could get something going around the basket, given that they were going to play us so t so tough on the perimeter, and we we couldn't we couldn't capitalize in there at all. Stephen Bailey next. Stephen, go ahead. Hey, Jim. Uh, I wanted to ask about Giroux specifically. You know, what jumped out to you about how he defended Buddy? Well, he's a really good defender. He just stayed with him every place he went, and uh, he's he did a great job. Buddy's get, gotten better, and he he did get make some moves inside. He got to there. He settled a little bit too much for the three in the second half. He probably should have continued to drive a little bit more. But uh, that's a learning experience. Uh, Jarrell's a really, really good defensive player, and they helped. You know, they were there to help him, but he's a, a, a really good defender. I, I just thought that would open up some things for us to score inside, and, and we were not able to do that. Uh, you know, I, I felt that our forwards uh, would be able to score in this game, and, uh, and they weren't, weren't able to. Go to Mark Larson next. Mark, please go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, you've kind of said all season that uh, when you make shots, you win, and when you don't make shots, you don't win. Was it just a matter of one of those nights where no, you didn't make shots? No, they were good defensively. They took it away from us. We had some opportunities. We should have been able to finish something, but a lot of that was their defense, and you have to give them credit for that. I told the players, uh, you know, you just if you look at the, the season – we should have lost to Bryant and we should have lost to Buffalo in, in the beginning of the year, whether it was the COVID pa pause or whether it wasn't, we weren't good enough, whatever reason, we should have lost both games. And then uh, as the season went, we, we kind of recovered a little bit. 
but you know we uh, we lost big at uh, at Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh home game was a horrendous loss. Uh, without going into the whole season, we were 16 down against NC State at home, and we won that game. Uh, and then we were 8-20 down to Notre Dame in the second half, and we won that game. And we had to win all those games, the Bryant, the Buffalo. I'm not even talking about Northeastern, which we were fairly lucky to win too. Um, but then winning the, the Notre Dame and NC State coming from that far behind. And then we had to beat North Carolina, which, who we hadn't beaten in, ten, I think, 10 games, something like that. And we had we had to, to so we had to beat uh, ten regular season. We did beat them in a tournament, ACC tournament, but hadn't beat them in ten regular season games. Then we had to beat Clemson, which you know is a good team, a tournament team, and we did all that. And then we came in here. We had to beat a six seed who'd won fourteen straight games, San Diego State. I mean that was a phenomenal game, phenomenal performance. And we had better balance. I mean, Buddy scored, but we had better balance. And then to beat West Virginia, I mean, we played really good defense and it was a really good win. Um, it's hard to beat seeds, 11. It's hard when you're 11 to beat a six and then to beat a three. Or where, I forgot where West Virginia was. They were pretty, pretty good. And uh, we just couldn't. Uh, overcome Houston and they're, because they're very good. They're really a really good basketball team and really good defensively. Really good. We'll go to Mario Sacco next. Mario, please go ahead. Jim, all season long you've been an advocate on this season needed to be played even during a pandemic. How beneficial was this season to be played by your team and how difficult was this season to be played? It was difficult for everybody, but we've gotten through it. We played most of the games. The tournament's been great. We've had a lot of good games in this tournament, really good games. Um, the players got a chance to play. My son's at Cornell, and he's been miserable for six months, as have all the other athletes in the Ivy League, because they didn't even get a chance to play. And someday we're going to look back and say, why – why didn't we play? Why would we ever even thought about not playing? These kids, if they if you get sick, they're better. They're back in a few days or they don't get sick. And uh, it would have been a monumental mistake to not play basketball. And I give the Dan Gavitt and his crew, his people, an unbelievable job they've done to make this possible, to the work that's gone into this to make this tournament possible. And it's the only thing that could have been done. The players want to play. Everybody says about the money. It has nothing. I don't think it has anything to do with the money. It, I mean, everybody thinks that and they're going to say that. The players want to play. That's as simple as that. You know, they wanted to play the season. And uh, I think our guy, I mean, it's, it's a, this is one of the best years that I, I've ever had coaching for these guys to get through this and to get to this stage, um, I think is just, is just unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. I couldn't be more proud of a basketball team than I am of this team, period. We'll go with Donna DeTota next. Donna, please go ahead. You know, Jim, I, I realize that the game has just ended, but I'm curious if you could look ahead a little bit, and in particular with, with Jesse in the middle and with your center situation just going forward. Well, first of all, I've seen 50 or 60 starters that have left, left programs in the last week to 10 days. I've seen five, six guys leaving programs. Being able to transfer and play right away means if you have any issue at all, any issue, you're going to leave. Those guys would never have left before, but now they're going to. We'll have guys leave, and it's it's what's going to happen. It, it that's what's going to happen, and uh, you know we just in the next two to three weeks as things happen, we're going to have to adjust to it and uh, start recruiting. You know, in the transfer portal, because we'll have guys in there. 
And as last year happened, we lost three guys or four, three three guards. And, you know, none of those three played anywhere where they went. But that's what's going to happen. There's going to be tra a lot of transfers, and uh, we're not going to be immune to it. We're Anybody that's not playing a lot or unhappy, um, they think they, you know, they, they, they could be perfectly good kids, perfectly happy, and everything, but they think they should play more or shoot more, whatever it may be, and uh, the players are going to leave. I mean, that's just the way it is, and there's going to be adjustments that, you know, that have to be made. I'm really happy with Jesse's development and Joe and, and Buddy and, you know, Kadari and, you know, Quince, the way they've played. Um, I think we have a great player coming in with great potential, but uh, we're we're going to have we're going to get somebody else, and I think we're going to lose players, and that's reality. I mean, it's North Carolina never lost a player. I remember recruiting against North Carolina; they had thirteen All Americans there, thirteen, and not one of them ever left, and only seven or eight of them played. I think somebody told me seven guys left North Carolina this year. I'm like, really? I mean, I'm just, that's amazing. I saw guys leave this year that were starters on teams because the coach tried to coach them. <laughs> you know? I mean, they didn't punish them, just tried to coach them a little bit. And it, that's what's going to happen. Uh, it's it's going to happen. It's going to happen to every just about everybody for sure we'll take one last question from anthony debundo anthony please go ahead uh kind of a two two-parter um has, has jesse mentioned anything about potentially transferring because uh, uh that's the first part and the second part was you, you chose to take him out with about two minutes left in the half uh and he ended up being plus 10 they went on a 10-0 run right after he came out of the game yeah uh, he that's, not being there hurt yeah that's why we that's why they went on that run i'm sure he was tired, okay? <laughs> really. That's just unbelievable. That's normal, Thanks, normal for Syracuse people. All right, this was a great year. I'm so proud of this team and uh, everything that they've accomplished. The guy that asked the question uh, two months ago said we wouldn't be in the NIT. So I guess that's so much for your credibility. This was a great year. These guys deserve all the credit in the world for what they've done. And we happen to lose to a really great basketball team tonight. Thanks, Coach. We'll be joined by Marek Dolajai next. And we are joined by Marek Dolajai. And we'll open up the call to media. Again, if you have questions, please raise your hand and we'll do our best to get to as, as many media as we can. We'll start with Mark Larson. Mark, please go ahead. Hey, Marek, uh, obviously uh, a disappointment in that locker room uh, despite such a great run you guys make. Can you just talk about uh, what the emotions are in there? Yeah, you know, uh, you cannot be happy after a lost game. And we knew we could win the game, but we just didn't make our shots, and it's just really disappointed. So, really, there's a lot of emotions going around us right now. We'll go to Stephen Bailey next. Stephen, please go ahead. Hey, Marek, uh, I wanted to ask about Giroux's defense. Um, what did you think of how he played Buddy? and? Were you guys hoping to maybe to be able to get a little bit more out of those actions with you and Quincy? Yeah, for sure. You know, we knew before the game they're a really good defensive team. But I think we got our shots. Uh, we had some open shots. It, they just didn't fall in. And, you know, if we don't make a shots, we're not going to win a game. Next, we'll to Nico. Tim Murian, Nico, please go ahead. Close enough, thank you. Uh, Marek, you know, I know it's tough to do right after a loss, but 
can you reflect on the heart this team showed to make this run, to make it to the Sweet 16, and, and really defy a, a lot of so-called experts' opinions on that? For sure, you know, <clears throat> this season was a whole roller coaster. You know, it started from game one, you know, Bryant, Brahma got hurt, you know, we almost lost that, that game. For I, I think first five non-conference, you know, it was every single game was tied. And, you know, everybody counted us out, you know, they told us we didn't deserve to be in March Madness. But I think we showed them and proved everybody that we deserve to be here and make this run after the season. You know, it just shows how much heart this team has. Next, we'll go to Danny Emmerman. Danny, please go ahead. Hey, Marek. Um, Danny Emmerman from the Daily Orange. Um, Houston did a really, really good job tonight defending everyone, but especially Buddy. Um, what are some things that you saw them do defensively to slow him down? You know, they're a physical team. They're a very physical team. You know, I would say top five in, uh, in defense in the whole uh, tournament. So it was really tough for us to find uh, open shots. So, and uh, how I said, you know, we had some open shots and we just missed those. Dan Tortora, please go ahead. Correct. Just what you can say about, you know, this team, this season, everything you guys been through, the starts and the stops, and just the pride that you have in this team and in your brothers on this squad. Uh, how I said, you know, this team has a lot of heart and a lot of pride, you know. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> it was really roller coaster season and uh, losing to Pitt twice, Clemson, they, you know, by 25. And, you know, there's many games, or, but we always came back and, you know, we tried to not focus on that. We just tried to focus on all the time on the next game. And I think we gave everything what we could, you know. We hoped we could win today, but we didn't. They played really good basketball. You know, we just need to move on. Just a heads up to media here that we'll take this last question from Marek, and then we'll be followed by Buddy Bayheim here momentarily. Carter Hill, please go ahead. Hey, Marek, uh, congratulations on a great season. Uh, my question is, what do you think the biggest improvement of this team was over the course of the year? You know, I think everywhere, you know, in all aspects, uh, we improved, you know, I think everybody improved from <clears throat> from me to uh, Woody who didn't play, you know, I think <clears throat> this is our thing and, you know, we just stick together the whole season and that helped us a lot. Thank you, Marek. Appreciate your time. Congrats on a great season. We'll be joined by Buddy Bayheim here momentarily. And we are joined by Buddy Bayheim. Again, for media who would like to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll do our best to get to as many uh, as many questions as we can to the time we have with Buddy. We'll open up with Stephen Bailey. Stephen, please go ahead. Hey, buddy. Um, you mentioned early this week or, or leading into the game that you knew Giroux was a really good on-ball defender. What did he do tonight that, that made things tough, and what do you guys wish maybe did as an offense to be able to capitalize on on some of the opportunities that, that helping on those screens presented? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a great defender, uh, player that defend – Defensive player of the year in their league, so I knew it was going to be a battle. And uh, he just jammed, jammed me coming off screens, jammed handoffs, whatever it was. I used great. Um, thought I got some, I got some looks I got to make, and I put that on on myself. But um, I mean, he's a really good defender. It's a great defensive team, and uh, they're just really physical, really aggressive. And we got some some looks that we didn't capitalize on. So uh, you can't can't uh, lose those opportunities against a team like that. Next, we'll go to Mario Sacco. Mario, please go ahead. Buddy, I asked your dad about how difficult a season this was playing in a pandemic and how beneficial it was. And he mentioned about your brother being home and not playing. For you, how beneficial of a season was it just to play this season 
And how difficult truly was it? Uh, it was tough. I mean, it's toughest year, toughest season of my life. Um, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of pauses. Um, never knowing if you're gonna play the next night or not, who you're gonna play. Um, but just uh, I think this year helped us all um, mentally and just uh, getting through to the next day and fighting every day, showing up ready to to work hard and. Uh, just proud of these guys for for never quitting, uh, no matter where we were at in the season, and just to be able to play 25, 26 games was was great. And I don't think any of us thought we would have been able to play that much. So it was definitely tough, but um, I'm just happy we got to play all these games. It was it was a lot of fun, and it was a great group. Let's go to Mike Waters. Mike, please go ahead. Well, I know it might be a little tough to do immediately after a loss, but Looking ahead to next year, um, is is the way this team played over the last two three weeks something that that can carry over in the next season? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we were just in our stride. Um, even this game, I thought we got good looks, um, just didn't capitalize, and, and our defense was was great. It's gotten a lot better throughout from the first game to this game. Our defense was a lot improved uh, night and day. So. I think we can build off this and uh, looking forward to, to the off season and just getting back in the gym. Next, we'll go to Nico Tamirian. Nico, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, you know, buddy, obviously you've seen a lot of Syracuse basketball teams in your life. Um, this team being able to come back from what it did to take it all the way to the Sweet 16, you know, what does that mean to you and, and what did it show about this team? Yeah, obviously this is a terrible feeling and, and sometimes it's going to take a while to get over. But uh, just to be in this position coming into today was uh, was great. Um, and just shows that uh, this team's resilient and got a group of guys that are going to fight no matter what. Um, and just ha happy to be a part of this, this group. It was a lot of fun and the coaches did a great job with us. So uh, definitely remember this season uh, forever and everything we, we battled. And... Uh, uh, definitely uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll look back on it and, and be proud. Time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Mark Larson. Mark, please go ahead. Hey, buddy. Congratulations on a great on uh, and uh, for you personally, especially. Uh, can you uh, talk about next year? Is it, is it too early to look ahead? I mean, there, it seems there's plenty to be excited about uh, for the guys that could be coming back next year. And, and what will this kind of do for that team, this little run you guys made? Yeah, it's tough to look forward right now, but uh, just excited. I think we can build on this. Um, shows, you know, we got a guy like Benny coming in who's, who's a great player. I'll uh, be an impact guy from the first day he gets here. So uh, the competition will be there. I think guys will be excited uh, after seeing how great that this tournament is and how great it is to win in it. So... I'm excited to get back to work, and um, we got a lot of work to do, but uh, it's definitely exciting moving forward. We'll take our last one from Danny Emmerman. Danny, please go ahead. Hey, buddy. Danny Emmerman from the Daily Orange. Um, I know you have a long summer ahead of you and a lot to think about, but I'm wondering what things might go into the decision-making process in terms of coming back to school or maybe trying to leave for the NBA draft. I'll be back. I got I got a lot of work to do, and uh, I know I can get a lot better. So uh, I got got to get a lot better um, if everyone want to think about that. So I'm looking forward to being back and getting back to work as soon as possible. Thanks, buddy. Congrats on a great season. Thanks for joining us. That'll conclude the Syracuse post game news conference. A transcript of coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at ncaa.com/transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Again, ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you.